Hello and welcome to Peacock TV. I'm Isabella Fernandez de Cueto. And I'm Oswaldo Sanchez. There's a lot happening on and off campus here at St. Peter's as students are gearing up for the end of the semester and graduation. On today's show, we'll see what Peacock's got up to on the Tamron Hall show, Student Government Association election results, an exciting new urban project here in Jersey City, and what's new in the dining hall. Later, ways to manage stress and why one student calls Peacock Palooza the most lit event of the year. But first, the SPU Athletic Awards. Reporting live from the Student Center where St. Peter's is getting ready to host their end of year athletic awards, where parents, athletes, family, faculty alike are getting ready to honor the most esteemed athletes of the year. Some of the night's notable moments included track and field winning team performance of the year for their win at the MAC Indoor Championships and softball winning four awards. Congratulations to all of the winners and nominees. Congratulations to all my athletes. The ceremony was great. Now let's check out Pick Up Palooza with Olivia. Hi, my name is Anna Ortega. I'm a sophomore at St. Peter's University. And last year's Palooza, I thought it was the best one. That's why I'm here again for part two as a sophomore. Inside the Yenatelli RLC, a number of dedicated volunteers, staff, and campus safety officials are gearing up for Peacock Palooza. I'm most excited to have a party with my friends at the school because it's like the most lit thing they have at the school. Uh, I'm volunteering so I can get in early. The end of year celebration promises to be the biggest event on campus. And in no time, the Run Baby Run Arena is brought from day to night. Hi, my name is Zaylin Camacho and I'm the Chair of Special Events on the Student Entertainment Board. So our theme this year is SEP Thousands. It's instead of 2000s, it's SEP Thousands. Palooza is our biggest party of the year. It's a wrap on our Spring Fest events. You can expect a lot of people, great music, fun giveaways, and our great shirt design. We're aiming towards an early 2000s, kind of Y2K feel. Destiny's Child, old vibes. Very unique and it's very fun. Y2K fashioned peacocks flocked in record numbers. For those who couldn't make it this year, we definitely missed you. See you next May, Peacock Palooza. Wow, Peacock Palooza looked like a lot of fun. Was that you dancing back there, Ozzy? You know it was. The night was definitely magical and exciting for me. I wish I could have been there. Now, let's check out a farm located right here in Jersey City with Astrid. <laughs> Urban Quack got started with my kids. I had small children that were about seven and eight and we wanted to teach them how to uh, raise chickens. And so we purchased a, a dozen fertilized eggs and put them in an incubator and three hatched. And ever since then we've had chickens. So now we have about 29. 29 birds, uh, chickens, and then about seven ducks. We, we encompass a lot of different things. We, we do some composting, which the kids have learned about. Uh, we also do gardening where they learn how to trim back vegetables so they grow optimally. And last year we harvested honey. So we were able to open up hives and they got to, uh, you know, take the frames and jar some honey up. And as well as uh, canning and pickling some vegetables that we did grow out in the farm. 4-H is kind of a community outreach to teach them things, skills that they've never learned and I think Urban Quack does that for them. The four H's in 4-H are head, heart, hands, and health. Head is for thinking and being a leader. Heart is helping the community, you know, bringing your heart, your soul into it. Hands are doing things in the community. And um, health is, of course, you know, being involved in the community makes the club healthy. And recruiting people to be in this program uh, you know, build better leaders, I think. Wow, what a wonderful community project. Now let's go back on campus to check out the dining hall. With the unfortunate closing of Pete's Place last semester, the Lauren Dining Hall became the main place on campus for students to get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So how has the dining hall adjusted to this change? For one, they installed a new build-your-own ice cream station with eight flavors and a variety of toppings, a big upgrade from the soft serve machine. Along with this, the dining hall has also been hosting special events weekly where they make a certain cool food that they normally would not make. 
They tend to be TikTok trends like the Flamin' Hot Cheetos Chicken Sandwich, the dining hall served in March, chef spotlights where a dining hall worker gets to highlight and cook food from their heritage, and even hands-on activities where students get to make their food themselves. On Friday, April 28th, I attended the empanada class where students got to make their own empanadas. The process went like this. Participants were given the empanada dough and the option of putting chicken, beef, and or cheese inside. After the empanadas were assembled, participants handed them off to one of the chefs to get fried, and then they were able to eat them. The students had a lot of fun and have been enjoying the recent creative events the dining hall has had. I really like eating in our dining hall because they've added a lot of new events, like make your own empanadas, make your own pizzas, stuff like that. That just makes it more like fun and interactive. Um, and they also let us make suggestions about what kind of foods we want to see. So, you know, it's nice when you get to pick your own menu. So, yeah. The Student Government Association welcomes their 2023-2024 representatives. Here's newly elected SGA president with more. Hey, hi everyone, I'm Marquise James. These past years I served as your 2025 class president. This upcoming academic year I'll be your student government president. Um, thank you for everybody who voted for me. I'm so excited to plan events and be the voice of the students next year. If you have any event ideas or different events you want to see on campus, just either reach out to me on Instagram or reach out to the student government Instagram. There are still a number of vacancies, so if you are interested, please email studentgovernment at stpeters.edu. The communications department went on their very first field trip back since COVID. Can you believe that? That's right. Thanks to Professor DeMillo and Professor Kroll, students were given the opportunity to speak with the executives in charge of production. The Q&A featured discussions, professional backgrounds, and suggestions for those looking to get into the media and creative industry. A nice break from classes before finals. With finals coming up, the university is making a big effort to help students be calm before the storm. A big part of this is SEB's Spring Fest, hosting many events around campus that will help with stress management. I think it's important to have all these events before finals because finals could be like a very stressful time for students. And students forget that they're in college and college is supposed to be about having fun while also getting this educational experience. So I think that it's important for the student entertainment board to hold these important events that really just give you a second, even if it's just an hour, just to decompress in between your classes or after school and just, you know, have a good time. I think college is a really good experience for a lot of people, but can also be really stressful. Um, I think we get swept up in the grades and assignments and exams, and it's important to kind of have a little bit of a pause by that. So having events run by students for students is really important, just as a little mental health break right before the busiest season of the semester, which is finals. Um, people are stressing about their grades. So just for a few hours, one night, hang out with your friends, have fun, and forget about the assignments for a little bit. Besides all the events offered by SEPs during Spring Fest, the Counseling and Psychological Services, better known as CAPS, hosted one of the students' favorite events. Kashmir, a licensed therapy dog, was warmly welcomed at the Theresa and Edward Otali Library. She was with her handler, Phyllis, to provide stress relief during finals. Good luck to everyone on their finals. Now, let's talk to some seniors about graduation and summer plans. So what are your plans after graduation? Uh, my plans after graduation is probably to go play professionally in DR and then after that probably play again in Europe, hopefully. So how are you feeling as your last moments on campus? Uh, I'm excited to finally graduate. So, you know, hopefully I can finish all my classes up and then just get ready for the May 19th. So I'm here with... Valeria Kaji. Now, what are your plans after graduation? So after graduation, I'm going to start my internship. I'm going to be a communication and development intern, and I'm excited for that because it's like a complete new field to me, and I'm going to be working a lot. Uh, I have a small business, Venus Lashes, at Venus Lashes, underscore on Instagram. Uh, and I'll just, you know, chase my bag, get that money, because I have a lot of plans that involve money. As you should, as you should. So now... How do you feel being in your last moments on campus? Feels unreal, to be honest. When you look back and think that four years just went by like this and now it's over, um, you know, it feels unreal, but I'm really excited to take all my accomplishments here and like just show them in the, to the world. We're certainly gonna miss our seniors. Good luck, Ozzy. This is definitely a bittersweet moment for me on campus. 
Once again, for Peacock TV, I'm Isabella Fernandez de Cueto. And I'm Osvaldo Sanchez. Peace out, Peacocks.